I'm gonna be making a Philly cheesesteak casserole today, and this is what you need to get started. So we're gonna need a casserole dish um, once we get everything cooked and ready to be layered, but we're gonna do our ground beef in a skillet here. We're gonna do all of our dairies in this, and then I meant to get a steamer bag to make this nice and lazy and easy, because you know how we are, and uh, we couldn't find that. So we got Three pepper and onion blend, and we're gonna put that in the stock pot instead because I don't have another pan right now. These are going to go in the microwave. We use cauliflower for fiber purposes, pasta or rice instead, if that's more your, your jam, but we're gonna throw these in the microwave to be our base layer. So on the peppers and onions, we're gonna do a low to medium heat. Here I have an ugly log of ground beef. It was from a three pound pack, but here we are using a pound and a half. And we're gonna put that on a low to medium temperature like the vegetables. But once it does get warmer, it will break down into the pan. Uh, and from there, I like to use Lowry seasoning salt on any beef products. You don't have to use this. There's also whatever you choose for like a burger seasoning almost. Um, and then obviously pepper, and I do a little bit more salt because I like it that way, but it's personal taste. To reheat frozen vegetables, I'm going to grab this olive oil here for this more Italian flavored dish. Typically I would use butter when reheating a frozen vegetable, but the oil of choice is up to you. As I'm laying out this cauliflower rice, I'm moving my fingers up the bag to the corners to be able to flick out that extra rice. When I grab those corners, I'm pulling outwards and it helps shake that rice out. I've turned off the heat and now we're preparing to strain the ground beef. We're gonna go ahead and pour that ground beef into an even layer across the cauliflower rice to prepare for our next layer. We've strained the peppers and onions mix and we're gonna do the same thing and just spread that out. In a small sauce pot or whatever size sauce pot you have, it doesn't matter, we're gonna <laughs> take this to about a, a very low heat and we're gonna go ahead and start combining these ingredients. Um, this is garlic powder, which is up to discretion and same thing with mozzarella, but we gotta get the cream cheese melted first. Try and get it melted down faster. Um, try not to rush this process because dairy products do curdle and they get kind of nasty. You're not gonna wanna eat that. Um, I do have some leftover heavy cream. You're going to do about a cup um, if you want your cheese mixture, it's gonna be poured all over this looser, you're gonna add more heavy cream. So I'm just gonna do the rest of this because it is about a cup left. Wait, it still smells good. So I am continuously stirring this. It is something you do need to keep an eye on. Don't walk away from this kind of thing. Whereas with the peppers and the ground beef, you can kind of walk away from that for a few seconds. This, I would absolutely keep your eyes on it. Um, at this stage where there are some chunks of the cream cheese left, I'm going to add garlic powder. Um, you can salt and pepper this if you choose to. That's about a teaspoon if I had to eyeball it, maybe a half a teaspoon if you're not a garlic lover. And you're gonna go ahead and mi mix that on in. So we're at a point where our chunks are kind of the size of crumbs, not too big, right? Um, I couldn't find shredded provolone, but at this point you were going to throw in your provolone. I went ahead and just pulled this apart with my hands so it would melt easier. It does not matter if you cut them nicely because, well, that's why. Uh, no, that's not why. Why is because it's going to melt anyways. It's time for mozzarella. Before I do the mozzarella, this is the consistency we're at. It's not quite where we need to be yet. 
But you see, you see the image, the dream, the imagination. It's there. Okay, so we've got like a cheese dough going on. This might be a little too thick. What do we think? Should we add know. more heavy whipping cream? Probably. Probably. I mean, this is acceptable if you want want it like this, though. But I, I don't think you can exactly. You know what I'm saying? So we're just gonna keep going here. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna turn the heat off on this. I did add about half a cup more of heavy cream, maybe even a cup more. Um, it is thicker than I would like it to be. It can be soupier and it will still work. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and try and pour this over everything here. It really does look like a dough, doesn't it? Um, so we're gonna get that out of our nonstick pan here. You don't have to use nonstick, but I do recommend it if you have one. I'm gonna try and spread this out into an even layer, like everything else. Layers, people, layers. Um, let's see. Into the edges if possible, you know. Maximalism and things. So you have this white sheet, and this is gonna go into the oven here in a second. Try and cover the vegetables as much as possible. Okay. So you've got two options here. We've got 350. Um, and you can put that in for about 10 minutes, or if you're really lazy and you can't wait, you can also do broil on high for about five minutes, just until the cheese on the top starts getting brown and crackly. It went a little ham. There's no ham in this recipe. Ta-da!